green caught up. So that's the thing about snow days is snow days are great while they're happening. But then a lot of times what that means is, okay, we need to catch up now because we missed a day of school. So we are going to continue moving forward. I will try to figure out getting green caught up when they are back in school, which, yeah, is hopefully tomorrow. But I heard we have some snow coming tonight. I don't think it matters because it's coming like this afternoon. It'll probably be fine by morning. But if green has another snow day, please, like, get over it. No one's doing this to you. You don't have school tomorrow either. Green? Hey, I'm going to tell you something that you won't believe. I'm going to tell you something you won't believe, but secretly I think you'll agree with it. Green, when they show up to school, are like, man, this sucks. I haven't seen you for like a week. Green kids are getting upset that they don't get to come to school very much. And you guys are like, oh, we didn't get a snow day. I get it. It does suck when you feel like somebody else got something. Like if Nate got an ice cream sandwich, I'd be like, I want an ice cream sandwich. But guys, it's just weather. And it's Ohio. So you are getting days off school also. Would anyone like to volunteer to tell us why we use a variable? And I, again, I'm going to section my page vertically. Stella? Yeah, we use a variable to represent an unknown. We use a variable to represent an unknown. Coefficient, we should remember what that means, but if we don't, you could make a note on your paper that that's the number or fraction that multiplies by the variable. So like 3z has the coefficient of 3. So if you need to remind yourself, you could write like 3z and kind of underline the 3 that that is your coefficient. Why do we use a coefficient? Well, how do I only have 1z here? No, I have 3z's. So we use a coefficient to show multiples of the variable. So to show multiples, and that's why we multiply, right? The coefficient is just to show multiples. And what it does is multiplication. to show something that we know, right? So the variable is to show something that we don't know. The constant is to show something we know. So show what we know. I know. So you should have a name up here. I like my last name more than my first name, and you should have a date up here. My first name's Micah, and it's from the Bible, and that's fine and sweet, but Hudson was a car manufacturing company that did not last very long, but they made some really, really interesting vehicles, um, and I just think it's a cool word. Micah, people often, um, like, struggle to pronounce, and Hudson, no one has ever struggled to pronounce Hudson. I'll tell you what. All right, so take a moment. Look at this. This is now what we're doing in Khan Academy if you are up to date on your homework. So if you're behind and you're like, I haven't seen this yet. Yeah, it's because you're behind. Take a moment and highlight or underline the important pieces of this and try to figure out, does this thing happen once or could it happen multiple times? If you have two different colors highlighters, this is where it will be convenient to start using two different colors of highlighters.
um, work. Guys, I so I am a very social person. Quarantine is driving me crazy. I have to keep busy. I spend almost every evening in my wood shop. Like I, I like woodworking. It's a hobby that I do. I have many, many saws and many sharp blades that could cut the crap out of me. This is not a cut. It's just my hands split open because I'm dry. Like my skin is just so dry. All those wipes that I have to pull out for each of you every day dry out your skin. It's it's safer for me to walk around than have you guys all bunch up. So I use this a lot. So if you see like that it's kind of white, that's actually just lotion that's on my skin just not soaked in. This stuff really works though. If your parents have dry skin, O'Keefe's, I'm not like sponsored by them or anything. O'Keefe's though, if you want to sponsor me, I'll take some free lotion. Um, so guys, here's the tricky part. I have trained you and I hope I've trained you well that per means, yeah, we said divide. If, if you like remembered what we had said previously, we said that per tells us to divide, but wait a minute. Mr. Hudson just underlined the word per and said multiply. We started talking about this on Monday, but here's the thing. If they said we charged you $500 for five cavities, solve the dollars per cavity, you could do the division to solve it. They're not asking you to solve the dollars per cavity. They're telling you the dollars per cavity. So when they're telling you the answer to the division, we no longer have to divide because notice we don't have a number of cavities. This is just one cavity. So this is actually telling us to multiply. Who's ever had a cavity? I've had a root canal, which is like a cavity, but even worse. It, it's bad. Cavities are no fun. So take care of your teeth but they take time to fix, right? So the dentist is gonna charge you $100 per cavity. So the, the total cost that we will pay at the dentist, so let's say the price, right? The price that we will pay is, well, what's our price just to go see the dentist and like get a checkup? $50, $50. that happens once. And then we get charged how much for each cavity? a hundred dollars so we would say times the number of cavities now hold on they say to use n though so if we were doing this in con even though my brain says ah oh, i'm gonna use c for cat no if con says use n so we would want to hear say 50 plus 100 n but it doesn't matter what variable we use if you're doing the math not in a computer it doesn't really matter whether you use C or N or F or K or X or J or Z or doesn't matter. But when they tell us what variable to use, we have to be careful. I can't use C here because they asked me to use N. Does that make sense? Because they told me N cavities, that's the variable that I want to use instead of using C. So that is why I'm going to highlight this for N cavities. So if I had three cavities, do 100 times 3, add that with my 50. They would probably have something equals or total cost is and then just the open box. So here's the big difference. I pause to see who looks up if you're actually paying attention. If they ask you for an expression, we don't type the equals. Right, Stella? So remember, if they ask you for an expression, you are just typing the expression, right? If they asked you for an entire equation, then we got to type in equals. Try this on your own. Sarah received $55. Ask yourself if we use it. So I should actually stop doing equations. I'm going to try to get myself to just write the expressions. So my apologies for using that equal sign. All right, so like promised, we got random cards now. So I'm going to pull a random card for who's going to help me with this one. So I should see people writing or highlighting or you guys can ask each other questions right now too. So if you're stuck, 
You can turn to a neighbor and say, hey, what do you think we should do? I would normally walk around the classroom right now, but because of COVID protocol, I'm not really supposed to do that. I go get my first vaccine shot today. So that's fun. Yeah, they all got signed up before me because I was teaching instead of trying to sign up. So it's a two shot thing. Uh, Johnson and Johnson, I think, is very close to getting approval, which I think is going to be safe for kids. This is a much bigger conversation than we have time to have today. Isaiah, what would we start with here? What, like, literally, what do we start with? It's on your paper, too. You don't have to look up at the screen. It's on your paper. Yeah, it's funny how sometimes the random cards just pop up to the, the student who wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. Interesting how it happens. Yeah, so if I come look at your paper, you have stuff written down or highlighted or underlined? What's, what do you mean you wrote down the answer? There is no answer here. The answer is an expression. Okay, what did you write down? Yeah, so what did we start with, Isaiah? This is not a trick question. You started with 55. That's literally the first thing you wrote down. So then I was going to ask you, what do you do next? And what we do next is take away, right? We subtract because Sarah buys something. She buys three shirts. And I don't know about you, but when I buy things, people normally want me to give away my money. So that is subtraction. We give it away, right? So three shirts at M dollars each. So that's why Isaiah said, well, it's actually minus three times M. If they asked for an equation, we could say like, okay, this equals the money she has or the dollars she has, but they're not asking us for an equation right now. They just want the expression, right? So this alone is just an expression. But then if they told you now she has $10 left, don't, you don't have to write this. Then we could actually figure out what the shirts cost. And that's what we're going to do on the back of this handout. Take a moment, try the, actually really try the last four on your own. We're going to go over all of them. Um, I'm going to give you five minutes to try to do all four of these and then flip to the back if you want to. I just want to give you a second to try these to make sure that we're building some confidence. And because they're up on or sorry, because they're on your handout, it's a little bit easier to do this now. I don't know, can you? No, I, I dislike when teachers do that. Let me check you how fast it was. Can is the wrong question, right? It's may I. May I have Yes, there is no one in the hall. You, you may go, Nate. Oh my gosh. So if we're highlighting, now the tricky thing here is the first number they give us is that $15 per hour, which again means a division happened, right? They're giving us the unit rate. Oh yeah, we could go back up to the coefficient and make a note that we said the coefficient is always the unit rate. So if you wanna go back up and make a note by coefficient, that coefficient is always our unit rate. That was something that seemed important for us to know. When we first started talking about coefficients, right? We said those are unit rates. So, Lily, what do you think here? 
And guys, you are always welcome to pass, but like literally, I just have a deck of cards with your names on it now. I just. You're good. This one's different than the ones that we had been doing because instead of adding on another constant, yeah, we're going to double our, well, what would their earnings be before they get doubled? 15 T, right, because the T hours, so the $15 per hour, then we multiply that times T hours, but then since a donor is going to double, how do we double? Times two. There we go. Yes, you don't need the multiplication dot. No. So actually here, I know that this ends up equaling 30t, but what we would actually want to write to show the doubling and the $15 per hour, you would want to do... 2 times 15 times t. Now, could you mathematically, Stella, here's why I have to say, like, let me go back. Mathematically, yes, you could do it without the parentheses. What I'm looking for you to do is the expression that, like, we gave you and then the thing that happened to it. But, Stella, on a test like for me, like our quiz last week, like, if you give me this or you give me this or, like, it, it'll count. It'll be okay. That I needed one more desk. I literally, I just needed one more desk for my room. Yeah, that's that's the not so complicated answer. Are you guys done with the other three? All right, take a moment. I, I started talking way too soon. I'll be quiet and I'll just highlight my stuff. The color of my highlighting doesn't mean anything. I'm just changing colors to, to kind of activate my brain. These are different things. I'll look for a volunteer here. Anyone want to tell me what they think we need to do? This one's tough. This one, again, is different than what we did in the previous ones. Lily, you want to go for it? Oh, you're really close. Sydney, what do you think? So the averaged per employee part, this is what throws this off. To average something, we take the entire amount that everyone sold together, divide that by how many people were doing the selling, and this G divided by eight. Sorry that my G looks, I don't even know what it looks like. I don't know if this would help. G divided by eight is the average sold. Because when you divide by how many people, that is the average. But then it's 17 fewer games. So we have to take away 17 from that average. Questions on this one. That was a weird one. That was definitely a weird one. I don't know. We're in here till 110, just for what it's worth. Hey, Nate, make sure that you get these copied down because you left the classroom, right? You're, you're good? You, you checked these? Okay. Natalie? Yes. Guys, try. I, I know when you got to go, you got to go. And now, like, 
lunch has happened, but try not to go in the middle of class if at all possible. Just we got a lot of learning to do. You're good, Natalie. I just put you in. Grandma, so we should be highlighting or notating some important stuff here. She baked 96 cookies and gave them to her grandchildren. All right, well, that's not, I don't know, that doesn't tell me a whole lot quite yet. One of the grandchildren, Cindy, received C fewer cookies than she would have received if all the cookies had been evenly divided among the eight grand. Ooh. If, right, if this happened, well, we know how many cookies she made. If the cookies were evenly split up, how, how could we find how many each kid should get, or each grandkid? 96 divided by 8. So let's do that first. 96 divided by 8 is how many she should have gotten. It's not. So it's a lot more than 7. It is 12. And if she got C cookies fewer than that. Yeah, 12 minus C, right? So she should have gotten 12 cookies. But instead, she got 12 minus C cookies. Questions on that one? All right, this final question on the front here. Grandma Gertrude gave 13 pieces of jewelry and Grandma Fien gave 11 pieces of jewelry to the Carlson sisters to divide evenly among themselves. We need to take the total jewelry that is there and split it up among the five sisters. How do we write that? Well, how do we write the total amount of jewelry there? Well, you just went, so we'll skip over your card. Nate, how do we write the amount of jewelry we have in total there? What's Anne tell us to do? Add, right? So 13 plus Y is how much jewelry the two grandmas put together. We have Grandma Gertrude and Grandma Fian. Because normally you have two grand, like a grandma from both sides of your family. And then we're going to split that up or mathematically divide, right, to the five sisters. So we put that over five. Any questions on that? And by that, I mean any of these six. Flip it to the back then. Like I said, if you write in pen, your back is going to look real messy, so I'm having to get another piece of paper. Go ahead and read what I have there at the top and see if you can uh, remember back to what we've talked about real briefly. We haven't covered this in depth. Anyone know what goes in that blank space there where it says we solve using blank to undo? What have we been calling it like all year when we un... Like how subtraction compares to addition. How division compares to multiplication. Well, that's when we break things apart. That's a good guess, but that's when we break things apart by a common multiple... This is not breaking things apart, but just literally undoing. So if somebody added five, you come up and take five away. Right? If somebody doubled an amount, you come up and you cut it in half. 
But like on close, it is like canceling. What I need you to write right here, and I'm I'm guessing you're probably gonna write it big well, I don't know. Inverse, meaning like the opposite. Inverse operations. That's why I'm normally going to say undo. I'm not going to say, what is the inverse operation? I'm going to say, how do we undo this? Right? So if I was you, I would highlight the word undo. That, that is what they mean when they tell us to solve. So Natalie, if you really quickly want to go back to the front here, I'll show. This is also the good thing about me flipping to the back. So the two that you, I think you just missed the bottom two. Tell me if I'm wrong. So guys, then look at what I have in the notes where it says solving a two-step equation. But before you do that, see where it says first? Read that sentence where it says first, look to see, read that. So guys, if you have highlighters, check it. First, look to see if there is a constant to remove. That minus four is a constant. So I'm gonna walk through this, but I need your attention, okay? The thing we want to solve for here is B, is our variable, is our unknown. B has two things happening to it. B is being multiplied by three and 3b is being subtracted by 4, right? So the b value is being multiplied by 3 and subtracted. When that stuff happens, the result is 11. Any confusion on what I just said about reading 3b minus 4 equals 11? So the first thing we want to do is undo the last thing they did. And, and it, I, I need eyes, right? What the first thing we want to do is undo the last thing that was done. We are going to go up the PEMDAS ladder, not down, like parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add. We're going to go up it because we're undoing. So the last thing that they would do is the subtraction. It's the first thing that we undo. What's the opposite of subtraction? Addition. And we do it on both sides of the equation. So notice what was 11 becomes 15. A minus 4 or negative 4 and a plus 4 or a positive 4 cancel. Like one of you already said, we're going to try to cancel things out. So my left side just becomes 3B. The minus 4 is gone. Now we divide by 3, and this is what I would highlight in a second color, then deal with the coefficient. So 3 is our coefficient. How do we undo multiplication? We do division. And that gets us our answer, b equals 5. We can check it by plugging it back into the original expression we were given. Try that on your own right over here to the right to solve for m. Right over here to the right where it says solve for m. Yep, yeah, yeah. Guys, you know I'm going to use random cards to ask you, okay, what do we do next? Okay, what do we do next? When we come over here and we look at trying to get the M, we need to undo everything that happened to it. There's a 2 and a 5. Right, on the same side as the M. 
after Nate's card is Lacey. What do you think we should do? For, oh, Lacey's not here. <laughs> yeah, until I looked up and I'm like, she sits right there. Martin, what do you think we should do first over here? So, first, look to see if there's a constant to remove. Yeah, the, the plus 5 can be removed if we do minus 5. So, let's minus 5 from both. So, guys, you write it. You don't just do it. You write it on both sides. If it would help you, some teachers train their students to draw a dotted line down the middle of the paper, like where the equal sign is, or you just draw like a really light line to keep left side, right side. If you want to do that, totally fine. Draw like a really light line to keep your left side and right side separate from each other. 13 minus 5 is, I'm going to use multiple colors to help this kind of make sense. 8, that line still shows our equals. And the 2 times m is still there, the 5 is gone. Now, Stella, what should we do next? Absolutely, to get rid of the multiplication by 2, we do division by 2. We show it on both sides. And m is equal to... Now we can check it by grabbing that value for the variable, plugging it back into the original and saying, is this true? 2 times 4 plus 5, is that equal to 13? Yes. Yeah, so I, I kind of, you don't have to write this out, but I kind of do this math in my head and I check if this is true, then we're good. We know that our answer is correct. Any questions on how we solved that? By the way, I had I had a joke up here about the two-step. What we are now doing is called two-step equations, but the two-step is also a dance. So, sorry, I know my jokes aren't funny, but I had that little joke there. So, it's called a two-step equation because step one was undoing the constant. Step two is undoing the coefficient. Guys, as soon as I started telling people, first do this, then do that, things got a lot easier. For my seventh graders, like I've been doing this nine years now, I've realized what I did wrong. I was a bad teacher my first year. People are like, oh, no, you weren't. Well, compared to now, I was not a great teacher. Highlight this, underline this, put a star next to it. I don't know what you need to do, but I also wrote it down here. Undo addition or subtraction, then multiplication or division. I gave it to you again as another hint down here. And I wrote it differently to try to help you out because up here I said remove the constant. And what that actually means to remove the constant is undo addition or subtraction. I want you, I'm going to flip this again and give you another five minutes. I want you to try all three of these equations down here. Now, I'll tell you, the second one and the third one are a bit tougher because now we're switching up from having to undo multiplication to undo division. How would we undo division? Multiply. If it would be helpful for you to draw a line where your equal sign is, that can keep your left side straight from your right side.
if you're stuck on the first steps up here, look up at the board. Otherwise, keep working on your paper because I'm going to start writing the first steps for each of these. Yep, you can try one of the ones from the bottom section if you want, the six more that are still there. So it hasn't been quite five minutes, but it's been at least like three and a half, I think. So Natalie, you are the next card up here. Uh, I already showed the first step for this equation over here, but what would be the final step to finish us out here? How do we undo that multiplication? Yeah, divide, what number do we want to get rid of? Yeah, the 12, so that's what we divide by, right? The 12 is multiplying, so we undo it by dividing. We do it on both sides, getting us an answer of D is 48. I mean, you're right. 4 is a number. 48 divided by 12 would be 4. Similarly, the next one, we also add 7 first to get rid of any addition or subtraction. But then, Isaiah, we're all the way back around to you. What would we do here to get the M by itself? Oh, yeah, we added 7 first, so good job. Then what do we do after that? What's the opposite of dividing by 2? By? Yeah. So if you want, you could write it 2 over 1, but you don't have to. We know that the multiplication by 2 will undo the division by 2. So our right side just becomes M. And our left side, 2 times 9, is 18. And guys, please do something with your final answer. Put a box or a circle or something. Sorry, I haven't been doing this, but we should get in this habit of when we get the... Notice that like B equals 5 is in a box up here. For my M equals 4 over here, I put it in a circle and looped it back around. So we want to notate when we get the answer for our variable. Uh, not, I mean, not right. Pencils. Just grab a pencil, dude. And anybody... What do I do to finish finding the value for J here? Anybody? Just shout it out. Ooh, care Ooh, I know the trap door you fell into, and thank you for falling into that trap door because you did it so we don't. You did that on purpose. Thank you, Natalie. This is not what we need to get rid of because it's not with the variable. So you fell into the trap door saying, I'm working on the right side. I'm working on the right side. Uh-oh. Now my variables on the left side, this is the side that I'm working on, right? That I'm like looking at. So the, the negative 12 can stay there. He doesn't matter. It's the plus seven. It's the plus seven that matters, right? We need to get rid of that plus seven. So we minus seven from both sides. 
That gives us j over negative 2 is still on the left-hand side. Now be careful, the right-hand side becomes negative 19 because we were at negative 12 and we went down by 7 more. Is anyone confused at why I subtracted 7 there? Because the variable is on the left side. How do I undo division? <laughs> Multiplication. What number do we need to get rid of? The negative 2. So we could put it negative 2 over 1, or we don't have to. We could just put it as a negative 2. Please make sure you've got this work written out so when you go to do it in Khan Academy, it still makes a little bit of sense. Like when you come back and look at your paper, if you've just got answers, you'll be like, wait, how did I get that? Because what's a negative times a negative? Positive. What's 19 times 2? Now, I only have three minutes to show you this problem twice. I know. This is what I mean. So, don't write this down. Okay? Don't write this down. I could, well, there's no post-its there anymore. Aha, here we go. I could do this distribution, right? This tells me distribute. So 2 times t plus 1, right? If I do that distribution, 2 times t, 2 times 1, I get 2t plus 2 equals 10. Okay, I did this distribution. Got 2t plus 2 equals 10. I can subtract 2 from both sides. 2t equals 8. I could divide by 2. t equals 4. Great. I just did way too much work. That, that is pointless. Here's what we should do instead. You should write this down. Nate, stop putting things away. You should write this down. The or, we can just undo it. We could distribute. But what is distribution? It's multiplication. How do we undo multiplication? As funny as that was. Yes, division. So, guys, please write this work out. If we divide by 2... What's a number divided by itself? It's 1. So my left side would now be just t plus 1. And my right side would be 5. I can now subtract 1. And t is just 4 which is the same thing I got on my post-it I just threw across the room. So, you can do the distribution and solve the equation like we've been doing further up the paper. However, you're going to spend extra time, extra effort, and extra paper doing that. Instead, not better, but a more efficient option, so I mean maybe better, we could probably call it better, is to, instead of doing the multiplication, stop it from happening by dividing. Now hold on, hold on. Real quick, because I just want you to have this next part written down, what would we divide by over here on both sides? The 5 to stop it from happening. What would we divide by over here? negative 4. And this is where we will pick up a week from today. I won't see you until next Wednesday. Yeah, I don't know. Stella? Right here? So, So t plus 1, I don't even need those parentheses. After that division happens, I just have t plus 1. I wrote it in parentheses because it was in parentheses up here, but that's the same. 
as just writing t plus one. So we're subtracting one because t has one added with it and we want to get rid of that. Does that make sense? It's that undo, right? We're doing the inverse operations. So we're out of time. Definitely out of time, especially with Mr. Johnson. He's over there. And he's definitely over there. Like, you're going to one B right now. That's an easy question. But then, after one B, where would you guys normally go? No. Yes, then that's where you're going. There is no science and connections today. There is no science and connections today. I would not put this in my I mean, life. They, this is your wife that missed the trash can. Is this the test of your wife that missed the trash can? Because it always seems like after you guys. Guys, please try to make sure your wipes get in the trash can. <laughs>